There are so many products in the market which is in the can called can products. In your kitchen, you will also find some. Do you know how canning is done? The technology behind it? If not, then stay tuned. Welcome folks to YouTube channel All Pro. In this video, we will be learning about canning in detail. The learner will be able to describe introduction of canning, principle and process of canning, continuous for packaging of canned products. Introduction of canning. The process of sealing food stuff hermetically in container and sterilizing them by heat for long storage is called canning. In 1809, Nicolas Apart in France invented a process of sealing food stuffs hermetically in container and sterilizing them by heat. Apart is also known as the father of canning. This work formed the foundation of modern canning processes. In honor of the inventor, canning is also known as appetizing. Fruits and vegetables are canned in the season when the raw material is available in plenty. The canned products are sold in the off season and give better returns to the grower. Principle and process of canning. Principle: Destruction of spoilage organisms within the sealed container by means of heat. Process: First, selection of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables should be absolutely fresh. Fruits should be ripe but firm and uniformly mature. Overripe fruits should be rejected because they are infected with microorganisms and give a poor quality product. Unripe fruits should be rejected because they generally shrivel and toughen on canning. All vegetables except tomatoes should be tender. Tomatoes should be firm, fully ripe and of deep red color. Fruits and vegetables should be free from dirt. They should be free from insect damage or mechanical injury. Second, grading. The selected fruits and vegetables are graded according to the size and color to obtain uniform quality. This is done by hand or by machines such as split grader or roller grader. Fruits like berries and cherries are graded whole, while peaches, pears, apricots, mangoes, pineapple, etc. are generally graded after cutting into the pieces or slices. Third, washing. It is important to remove pesticide, spray residue, and dust from fruits and vegetables. One gram of soil contains 10 to the power 12. Spores of microorganisms. Therefore, removal of microorganisms by washing with water is essential. Fruits and vegetables can be washed in different ways. Root crops that loosen in soil are washed by soaking in water containing 25 to 50 ppm chlorine. Fourth, peeling. The objective of peeling is to remove the outer layer. Peeling may be done in various ways. First, hand peeling. It is done mostly in the case of fruits. of irregular shapes example mangoes and papaya where mechanical peeling is not possible steam peeling free stone and clean stone peaches are steam peeled in a different way the former are cut and steam washed potatoes and tomatoes are peeled by steam or boiling water mechanical peeling this is done in the case of apple peaches a pineapple and cherries and also for root vegetables like carrot turmeric and potatoes Leaf peeling. Fruits like peaches, apricots, sweet oranges, and vegetables like carrot and sweet potatoes are peeled by dipping them in one to two percent of boiling caustic soda solution for 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on their nature and maturity. Partly loosens the skin from flesh by dissolving the pectin. The peel is then removed easily by hand. Any track of alkali is removed by washing the fruits and vegetables. thoroughly in running water or dipping it for 2 seconds in 0.5% citric acid solution this is a quick method where the cost and waste in peeling is reduced flame peeling it is used only for garlic and onions which have peppery outer covering this is just burn off fifth cutting pieces of the size required for canning are cut seed stone and the core are removed some fruits like plum from which the seed cannot be taken out easily are canned whole six blanching fruits are generally not blanched leaving the oxidizing enzyme system active sometimes fruit is unplugged for a given time for 2 to 5 minutes according to the variety in into water at 180 degree fahrenheit to 200 fahrenheit and then immediately cooled by immersion in the water in cold water blanching is usually done in the case of vegetables by exposing them to boiling water or steam for 2 to 5 minutes followed by cooling the extent of blanching varies with the food 
This brief heat treatment accomplishes the following. Inactivates most of the plant enzyme which causes toughness, discoloration of flavor, softening and loss of nutritive value. Reduces the area of leafy vegetables such as squeeze by shrinkage or vaulting, making their packaging easier. Removes tissue gases which reduces sulfide. Reduce the number of microorganisms by as much as 99%. Enhances the green color of vegetables such as peas, broccoli, and spinach. Removes undesirable acid and astringent taste of the food and thus removes flavor. Removes the skin of vegetables such as wheat root and tomatoes which help in their peeling. 7. Cooling. After blanching, the vegetables are dipped in the cold water for better handling and keeping them in a good condition. 8. Filling Before filling, cans are washed with hot water and sterilized but in developing countries, they are subjected to a jet of steam just to remove dust and foreign material. Automatic large can filling machines are used in advanced countries, but trays grade of fruits are normally filled by hand and to provide brushing after filling covering with the syrup or brine is done, and this process is known as syruping or brining. There are two methods of filling, syruping and brining. Syruping, a solution of sugar in water is called syrup. White or refined sucrose is employed, either of a can or wheat origin. Normally, sucrose syrup is used in the canning. Syrup is added to improve the flavor and to serve as a heat transfer medium for facilitating processing. Syruping is done only for fruits. Brining, a solution of salt in the water is called brine. The objective of brining is similar to the syruping. Only vegetables are brined. Common salt of good quality, free from iron, should be used. Hot brine of 1-3% to of concentration is used for covering vegetables and is filled at 79-82 to degrees Celsius, leaving a head space of 0.3-0.5 to cm. The brine should be filtered through a thick cloth of before filling. After syruping or brining, the cans are loosely covered with a lid and exhausted. Lidding has a certain disadvantages such as slipping of content and dropping of the lid. Hence, lidding has now been modernized by a clenching process, in which the lid is partially sealed. The lid remains sufficiently loose to permit the escape of dissolved as well as free air from the can and also the vapor formed during the exhausting process. A sort of high chemical and biological purity is used in vegetable canning. Ninth, Exhausting The process of removal of air from cans is known as exhausting. After filling, exhausting is essential. The major advantages of exhausting are as under. Corrosion of the tin plate and pin holing during the storage is avoided. Minimizes discoloration by preventing oxidation. Helps in better retention of vitamins, particularly vitamin C. Prevents building of cans when stored in the hot climate or at high altitude. Reduces chemical reaction between container and content. Prevents development of excessive pressure and stain during sterilization. 10th. Sealing. Immediately after exhausting, the cans are sealed airtight by means of can sealer. In the case of glass jar, a rubber ring should be placed between the mouth of the jar and the lid so that it can be sealed airtight. During sealing, the temperature should not fall below 74 degrees Celsius. 11th Processing Keeping of foods for preservation is known as processing. However, in canning technology, processing means heating or cooling of a canned products. To inactivate bacteria, many bacteria spores can be killed by either high or very low temperature. Such drastic treatments, however, affects the quality of food. Processing time and temperature should be adequate to, to eliminate all bacterial growth. Moreover, overcooking should be avoided as it spoils the flavor as well as the appearance of the food products. 12. Cooling After processing, the cans are cooled rapidly to about 39 degrees Celsius to stop the cooking process and to prevent stack burning. Cooling is done by following methods. Dipping the hot cans in the tank containing cold water. Letting cold water into the pressure cooker, especially in the case of vegetables. Spring cans with jets of cold water, exposing the cans to air. Generally, the first method, that is, dipping the cans in the cold water is, is used. If canned products are not cooled immediately after processing, peaches and peel become dark in color. Tomatoes turn brownish and bitter in taste. Peas become fluffy with cooked taste and many vegetables become sour. 13. Storage 
After leaving the cans, they should be packed in a strong wooden cases or cardboard carton and stored in a cool or dry place. The outer surface of cans should be dry as even as a small crack of moisture sometimes induce rusting. The storage of cans at high temperature should be avoided as it shortens the shelf life of the product and often leads to the formation of hydrogen fuel. The marketable life of canned product varies according to the type of raw material used. Canned peaches, grapefruit, pineapple, beans, spinach, pea, etc. are can be stored for about 2 years while peas, apricot, carrot, beetroot and tomatoes can be stored for a comparatively short period only. Containers for packaging of canned products Both tin and glass containers are used in the canning industry, but tin containers are preferred. First, tin containers. Tin containers are made up of thin steel plates of low carbon content lightly coated on both sides with tin metal. It is difficult to coat the steel plate uniformly and during the process of manufacture, small microscopic spots are always left uncoated. Although the coating may appear perfect to the eye, the content of the can may react with these uncoated spots resulting in discoloration of the product or corrosion of the tin plate. It is necessary therefore to coat the inside of the can with some material which prevents discoloration but does not affect the flavor or wholesomeness of the content. This process is known as lecturing. There are two types of lecturing are used, acid resistant and sulfur resistant. Tin containers are preferred to glass containers because of certain advantages. Ease of fabrication, strength to withstand processing, lightweight, ease in handling, cheapness can be handled by high speed machines. Second, glass container. Glass container poses two distinct advantages over tin cans. The content being visible can be easily displayed. They can be used over and over again. Moreover, glass of high quality does not contaminate the content. Hence, such containers are preferred for packing baby food but being fragrable require extra care during handling and processing. If you like the video, so hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel or grow. Thanks a lot guys for watching the video.